Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the regular monthly meeting of the Greenwich Board of Estimate and Taxation. Please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is our regular monthly meeting. There are copies of the meeting agenda available as well as a set of the materials that we'll be considering. Prior to beginning business this evening, I wanted to take a moment to uh, mourn the passing of one of the former members of the BET, uh, Sheila G. Arnabaldi, passed away on March 2nd, 2007. She was 73 years old. She served on the BET in the 1970s. She was a member of the uh, Democratic Caucus. She served uh, as a nominee to the Democrat, Democratic uh, Legislative Delegation as well as the State Delegation in 76. She served on the Board of the Greenwich Library and the Board of Pathways. At this moment, I would ask that you please rise and join in a moment of silence in her memory. Thank you. Item number two, consideration of applications. For this purpose, I call upon the board clerk, Ms. Rutgers, to read them. All of our applications are routine tonight. SE15, Office of the First Selectman, an additional appropriation of $11,500 for settlement of Thiel versus Town of Greenwich. ED7, the Board of Education, approval to use a grant in the amount of $25,000 from the Ruth Brown Foundation for a mural at the new Hamilton Avenue School. ED8, Board of Education, approval to use $1,389 received by PTA groups for expenses incurred at the Havemeyer Print Shop. ED9, Board of Education, an additional appropriation of $482,042 for electric service overruns. FL2, Fleet, transfer of $50,000 from one account to another. <coughs> NW3, the Nathaniel Witherell, Release of conditions on $3,870,163 and SS3 Social Services, the release of conditions on $741,345. And I move these seven routine applications. Moved by Ms. Rutgers. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Walco. All in favor? Aye. Carries 11-0-0. Proceeding to item number three, the assessor's report. With us is Town Assessor Ted Gortney. <coughs> Welcome, Mr. Gortney. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Um, you have my report now, uh, prepared to answer questions. The Board of Assessment Appeal did complete their work. They'll be giving us the, um, the final numbers tomorrow, and it'll take us about a week to process them. So I'll be able to give you the results at the next meeting. There's two typos in the report. On item four, I said that approximately 212 real estate appeals. It should be 227 real estate appeals. And the second typo is at the end. I have long term for number two and number three on objectives. It should be three being ongoing. Be happy to answer any questions that you have. Uh, yes, uh, good evening. Um, I was wondering if now it's getting to the point where perhaps it would be appropriate to prepare a chart for point number five, litigation 2005 reval, so that um, we begin to see the numbers associated with the reval and the, the court cases, et cetera. Is that beginning to be timely yet? It's getting to a point where I could do that, yes. Okay. We have had five cases uh, disposed of, so we at least have a couple of lines. 
and that would be informative. Well, obviously it doesn't have to be as detailed, but just begin to lay it out. Okay. Thank you. Uh, expectation of the number of hearings to be held by the Board of Assessment and Appeals this year? The total number was 227 was the number. Right. Did you have a, an expectation? Well, um, during the last revaluation in 2001, there were, I think were 350 at the second year. Um, the Board of Assessment Appeals the first year after the revaluation was lower than the last revaluation, and we expected it to be lower, yes, and probably next year will be lower again. So it's in the ballpark, is that fair to say? Yes. Further questions? Ms. Tarkington. Yeah, I actually had a couple more. Um, one was on this um, point number seven, the freedom of information. Mm -hmm. um, you talked about Mr. Whitaker has uh, filed for a hearing. Do you have any estimate of what the timing of that is, the hearing? Or is that just sort of vague now? Estimate on? Well, it said um, Mr. Whitaker has filed for a hearing with the commission. This is the FOI commission. Yes. And he's asked for certain information. Do you have any idea what the time frame of this potential hearing is? It's sh scheduled, I believe, for the end of this month. Oh, so it fairly. Be, it should be coming up shortly. Thank you. And then I had one final question on the uh, point number nine, the historic house transferred to the mm -hmm. town. Who approves the um, acceptance of additional property like this for the town? And then do appropriate notices go to the controller's office for insurance and those kind of things? Is there a process for this acceptance of an additional property? There was a long process in this case that uh, went over several years since I've been here. <laughs> and uh, it was finally uh, agreed upon by the a town administrator and the first selectman and the board of selectmen that they would uh, accept this back. And uh, the Lions Club uh, had been renting it out as a house for almost 20 years, but it finally uh, became um, uninhabitable because of uh, problems with the roof and the plumbing and so forth. And so, I, so the Lions Club has not wanted to have the property in its name for a long time, but the town did not want to take it back until it knew exactly what it was getting. So it went through a legal process and it went through then a, a, a series of steps that were approved. Thank you. Further questions? Not, thank you, Mr. Gordy. Thank you. Mr. Shetman, thank you for attending as well. Is our motion to accept the assessor's report? So I moved. moved by Mr. Walco, seconded second by Mrs. Tarkington. All in favor? Aye. Aye. EET Committee and Liaison Reports. Uh, Mr. Stone, you have a report from Audit. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Audit Committee met on the 8th and the 15th of March. On the 8th, uh, concerning the uh, payroll audit findings, Town Administrator uh, had to reschedule his participation in the meeting, and he will report to the Committee at our April uh, meeting. Controller Minarski indicated his understanding that payroll timesheets are yet to be fully introduced and that the Human Resources Department has requested additional time to implement other changes. Concerning the town's contract and purchasing uh, procedures, we discussed the response uh, received from the town attorney to our request uh, concerning other documentation that might be required uh, and concluded the meeting uh, with the town attorney would be in order. Uh, we met with Mr. Fox uh, and with Joan Sullivan on Friday the, third, uh, Friday the 15th uh, and made a great deal of progress at that point in time. Uh, Attorney Fox is in the process of getting additional input on the subject. Uh, we reviewed the documentation that we've been discussing with Ms. Sullivan and made some adjustments as a result of concerns that she raised. We reviewed the analysis of accidents involving town-owned vehicles. Uh, in the future, the risk manager will be focusing attention on, on employees involved in multiple incidents while operating town-owned vehicles and equipment. In that connection, and to better understand the fire department's uh, uh, driver and equipment training, we agreed to invite the chief deputy <coughs> fire chief to our next meeting. Uh, we discussed the RFP for engagement of the independent auditor. 
Uh, that RFP has been sent to the big four accounting firms along with M&P, our present auditors, as well as Blum Shapiro. Responses are due by the 23rd. Mr. Chairman, should I report on the um, retirement board liaison or do you want to do uh, that Yes, no, on? proceed if you can. Okay, thanks. Um, you'll remember that in addition to my reporting on the underperformance of various money managers for a number of months, uh, I've been drawing attention also to the absence of operating <coughs> procedures uh, by, the, uh, by the retirement board. At the request of that board's administrator, uh, I provided a model that might be used for discussion purposes. I've suggested conditioning 500000 uh, of the board's next year's budget relative to adoption of reasonable guidelines. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Great. Thank you. Mrs. Tarkington, do you have a report? Uh, yes, I do, Mr. Chairman. The HR committee has held two regular meetings. All members, Mr. Minarski and Ms. Cass, were present at both of the meetings. The February meeting was rescheduled to February 23 due to a snowstorm. Discussion focused on finalization of the HR committee recommendations on the first selectman's fiscal year 2007-2008 budgets organization chart and timing of recommended position changes in the current and upcoming fiscal years. The resulting report was presented at the Budget Committee's February 28 Decision Day meeting. The committee also reviewed supporting reports and was updated on the MC study. Uh, the HR committee also met on March 14. The committee discussed an updated um, organization chart based on the Budget Committee's recommendations to the full BET, which includes adding back two police officers to direct traffic on Greenwich Avenue. In addition, the committee discussed the reports prepared by the finance and HR departments, and Ms. Cass presented an update to the MC pay plan. Would you like an update on the uh, MC pay plan also? Yes, please. Um, the MC uh, pay plan committee has not met since the last BET meeting. Ms. Cast and Mr. Kava, as instructed by the committee, had a conference call with one of the consulting firms interviewed by the committee. They expect a written response to their questions imminently. The MC pay plan committee will meet shortly thereafter. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mrs. Tarkington. Are there other reports from committees or liaisons? Mr. Walko? Very, <clears throat> very briefly on HAMAV, Mr. Chairman. Um, the HAMAV Building Committee uh, met this month. We appear to be at least uh, four weeks uh, behind schedule. We're still shooting for a uh, mid-April date by which to determine whether or not the contractor will um, meet the deadline of, of being ready to have school open in September at that school. And so we look forward to our April meeting as a building committee to see the results of that assessment. Great. Thank you, Mr. Walko. Tomorrow morning there will be a meeting of the Glenville School Building Committee for information purposes. 7.30 at the Havemeyer Building. <coughs> Any other committee or liaison reports? If not, Mr. Minarski, item number five, controller's report. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, BET members. You all have a copy of the controller's report. I'll answer any questions you may have at this time. Mr. Simon. Could you clarify the last <laughs> sentence under the risk management of the first paragraph? It says the expiring options purchased last year were $309,880. Yes. And, um, what exactly is an option? Pre another word for premiums. There's, there's a couple options uh, in the um, uh, policy. Uh, don't recall exactly what they were. You have the uh, option to exercise them. And um, they basically went with the same policy. For example, one of the options was we could have gone out for 16 months. I believe the policy uh, starts March 1st, and we could have put it in sync with the uh, fiscal year. As you know, that Nathaniel Witherall policy is the only one that's out of sync. It starts March 1st, goes all the way around. So that's one of the options that was not exercised. So well, would, I, would I read this to say that we renewed for $20,000 less than we paid last year? Or would that be an incorrect assumption? 
This is, this is the same policy as last year. At well, the same premium? With a let, no, the premium is, is 289000 versus the higher number. So it would be safe to assume we renewed for $20,000 less than we paid the, this year. For the same period, same term. It was 16, uh, 12 months. Okay. Thank you. Mrs. Tarkington? I'd, I'd just like to make a comment to uh, Mr. Minarski's first paragraph. He comments about how the budget director and finance department staff have provided extensive support um, to the BET Budget Committee, but I think it's fair to say that he's also provided that same extensive support to the first selectman and the town administrator as well as the Budget Committee. I think he's not taking enough credit for all the work they did. I, I believe that was in last month's uh, <laughs> policy and sequentially uh, as as we move on past tomorrow night and the public hearing and the meeting on Wednesday we get a tremendous amount of questions and demands from the RTM so sequentially and Roland gets uh, gets most of the credit for this going back way before <coughs> January 1st uh, Roland supports the first electman and the town administrator and, sequ and sequentially it shifts from the first electman's office to the BET and the RTM <coughs> But uh, we appreciate it, and uh, I'm sure Roland appreciates uh, the accolades. I wanna... what, is, what is the town's policy in terms of level of service and level of information to which we provide to any resident who would like to come and talk to the finance department? Do we have a policy, or is it just like an unlimited open door? There's, I don't believe there's one in writing. Uh, we. We do get uh, this year more more so than uh, other uh, previous years. We've got a lot of interest from the Board of Education, uh, one or two of the PTA uh, or PTO uh, groups, uh, Parkway Group. Um, as a as a policy not established, but uh, common sense is is we don't get out information pre prior to the BET or anybody internally getting it. Anything that's been well established, for example, a budget book that's been given out to the uh, the first selectman's office, the BET, and the RTM chair, chair people will share the information that is uh, contained in that document as an example. But I don't believe there's any written policy uh, beyond what's uh, established with the uh, Freedom of Information Act. I think, I think my question is there's a difference between sharing the information and sitting down with individuals and explaining the information. And I don't know. If, we, if you've been inundated with people coming in asking questions about the budget, asking, peop, asking to explain it to you, and I don't know what the, your policy is or what our policy is towards that. Uh, but clearly, if we had 150 people lined up asking for separate explanations, that would be disruptive to the work. Personally, I've had three requests. There was, there was a woman that walked in today that wanted to know if she could speak at 8.15 tomorrow night. And she, I was going to... Uh, present this to the chairman of the uh, BET tomorrow through an email request. There was another woman who came in who requested some information regarding the 10-year budgetary forecast, which I claim is it's not available. It hasn't been publicly released. I've had three requests personally, and none of them have been interrupted <coughs> as far as the office flow. I don't know if, if you see anything. I, I haven't, and this year more so than the previous years is the first time we've had actually had people walking in and asking for information. Mr. Norton. Uh, yes. Um, on your final page here, Peter, you referenced the general obligation bonds of 11 million. Can you give us any uh, indication as to when we may be selling those? Can you be more specific I, than it is I had a brief conversation with uh, Ed Gomo last week, and he said we're very close to settling the uh, Tuckman issue as far as uh, going out to market. We're still, we were shooting for March, so if, again, not to speak for Wayne Fox in the law department, we're still shooting on uh, a bond issue before June 30th. Okay, so the end of the fiscal year. The financing is, issue, yes. This is what you're looking at now. Okay, yes. Thank you. Further questions? If not, is there a motion to accept the controller's report? So moved by Mr. Norton, seconded by Mr. Stone. All in favor? Aye. Acceptance of the treasurer's report for 
activity for the period of February 1st to February 28th. Treasurer's point of one Why do we get these different annualized percentages in February on the stiff funds for the different accounts? And they vary considerably. I mean, the school lunch fund gets 5.63. This is at the bottom of the page. And sewer maintenance gets 4.83. It's uh, the Isn't this for just the month? Yes. They change the date, and once they do that, balance. Yeah, there's not a average daily balance. It's calculated. It's, it's just a form that says beginning balance plus and minus the additions, and that's sort of the, the balance. Of the, the average balance is assumed to be this calculation. Mr. Chairman? So the retirement would probably be closest to the truest number? Right. Uh, <coughs> okay. Yeah. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Norton. I think I can answer that question because I had a discussion about this with the treasurer today. She told me that she has changed the date for which this is done from the 1st to the 15th of the month. <clears throat> and because the balances may vary using a 15th of the month date, this is why you're getting the different percentages in this report. <coughs> I'm lost. That, re that requires more explanation. This is a month of February report. But there has to be a day in which they take the, they do the calculation. So it's... It's what day in which they do the average balance? Yes. I'm sorry, I asked the question. <laughs> <laughs> is there a motion to accept the report? Moved by Mr. Norton, seconded by Mr. Himes. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Number seven, approval of BET minutes for the regular monthly meeting on February 20th. Ms. Rutgers. Uh, there's one small change to the minutes that went out in the board packet. Um, Ms. Tarkington um, emailed me this afternoon with a, a change on page two. Um, it, instead of Ms. Tarkington asked Mr. Minarski to follow up on credit and delivery risks, it's on price risk and delivery risk. Okay. So I, I have changed that in the, in the copy that we're ready to sign. Otherwise, everything is the same. Great. With those amendments, is there a motion to approve the minutes as amended? So moved. Moved by Mr. Simon, seconded by Mr. Walco. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, number eight, officer's report. As we all know, tomorrow evening is the public hearing on the 2007-8 budget. We will begin promptly at 7 p.m. at the Central Middle School Auditorium. The format for the hearing will be, uh, each speaker will be allotted three minutes. We will begin by taking <coughs> comments on the town budget as a whole. We will then move into the categories of the operating budget, general government, fire, uh, police, Public Works, Daniel Witherell, Health, and so forth. And then third, we will cover all of the capital projects as they are listed in priority order. We will provide copies of that listing to the <coughs> public that will show the projects in ranking order as well as um, by department. I've asked Roland to do that as well as the public notice that was published in the uh, Greenwich Time as is required by sections of the stat of charter be published, I believe, 10 days prior to. Um, speakers will be given three minutes, as I've said. They can um, speak on multiple subjects. They're not restricted per the subject. They will only be given one chance on a subject until all speakers on that subject have been heard, and then they can come back for a second, uh, a second chance. Um, I envision the meeting to conclude before 12 p.m., but if we were to run close to 12 p.m. or beyond it, a decision could be made by the board to continue it to the uh, following evening. And I appreciate Mr. Simon and Mr. and Ms. Rutgers' uh, feedback and Mr. Walko's into 
establishing those guidelines for the hearing and we will have them for distribution to the public so they're aware what to expect when they come in as well as I will publicly <coughs> note. And just in a brief, um, very brief item, there is still the need for the control order to certify the North Miami sewer project. Um, a meeting was held with the um, town attorney and the town administrator and there will be hopefully a resolution within the next uh, few months. There's conversations with the group that is allegedly representing a faction of the homeowners, but we hope to bring the issue to a conclusion um, shortly. Mr. Stone, do you have any? Is this Ms. Rutgers? Okay, there's no old business under new business. The Budget Committee in its deliberations <coughs> last month had uh, raised some questions as it relates to the Central Business District Plan that had been in um, discussion and requested some information be <coughs> presented this evening prior to the board's <coughs> public hearing and the meeting on Wednesday. So with us tonight is Town Administrator Ed Gomo to <coughs> expound on that subject. Okay, uh, we have a couple of representatives from our consultant, uh, Peter Gisalthi Associates, uh, Michael Tribe and Robert Ryder, and they'll set up some boards and give you some overview of what we're doing. But <clears throat> I just wanted to kind of bring you up to date as to how we got to where we are now. That in 2005, the town appropriated $35,000 and $80,000 for two, in theory, different studies. One was the Greenwich Avenue streetscape for $35,000, and the other was $80,000 for the uh, Greenwich Central Business District study. And I think what happened was the Salfi was retained to do that, and we got to a point where we realized that, that it was very limited focus of what we were doing. It wasn't going to be comprehensive enough of what we were looking at. Uh, so just all of you did do some preliminary drawings, did some scope, and looked at uh, different parts of this. And we reformatted the committee that was working with us on this to take a look at the entire downtown Greenwich Business District and to see how we could incorporate that into <coughs> one plan, so to speak, in terms of what it will look like from the top of the avenue all the way down to Railroad Avenue, town hall around the parking lot all the way through with the new town green and some other things like that. I want to make a couple of points. One is that <laughs> this kind of plan is independent of the building usage, whether it's Havemeyer or whether it's Senior Center or whether it's town hall. This is a town <coughs> type application for Greenwich Avenue and also for the town green and other places over there whether they use Havemeyer for Arts Center or whether they use it for the Board of Education. This isn't going to matter. This will sort of be contiguous with whatever the town is doing. This is sort of a, a vision quality of life issue for downtown Greenwich uh, to change the image of what we have now. Um, and it will be integrated into the plan of conservation and development. I know that RTM passed their sense of the meeting <coughs> resolution uh, to kind of hold off on doing anything downtown until they finish with the, the POCD. The problem with that is that the POCD is not in detail enough to handle this kind of scope. Uh, this plan, which we will take to various town boards and commissions, will take it to outside uh, agencies such as the Chamber of Commerce, the Rotary Club, will run this through all the neighborhood associations before the committee comes back with a final report. We'll give that to planning and zoning, and they'll integrate that into the plan of conservation and development. Now, the problem is if we don't start funding this thing, we're going to fall two years behind because by the time they finish with the POCD and we can't start until that point, <coughs> it'll be three years from now. And you'll have no downtown green area. You'll have no improvement in what we're doing down there. So we're hoping that people see that this is sort of part of what we're doing with planning for the whole downtown, that it's not a separate issue that we're not going to take away from the plan of conservation and development. Um, but we are looking at bringing it before a number of different people over the next year once we get, once we get a conceptual uh, vision from Gisalfi and we'll, we'll take it around to the areas that have to look at this, to neighborhoods as well as everyone else, because this is a, a town asset. It's not an asset just for downtown in the sense this is what people have to want <coughs> downtown to look like, and we'll do our best to, to follow their, their suggestions and guidelines when we do it. Ready, pretty much? Ready. Okay. Well, Michael has been handling uh, most of the work on this, so he's probably the best one to kind of give you an overview of where we are now with the plan and where we're going over the next year or so. Uh, 
I think I passed that list out to you a while ago. It was... Uh, uh, we have Diane Fox, myself, Franklin Bloomer, Mary Hull, Joanne Messina, Mary De Silva, Laurie Jackson from the uh, uh, <coughs> Christian Eye Aging, Arlene Lamazzo, uh, Mary Corson, uh, Mary Ann Morrison, Joan Gajewski, Vince DiMarco, Bruce Spayman, Lloyd Hubbs. Uh, we have a number of people. It's kind of it's a, one of the more diverse committees that you'll find in terms of soliciting opinions and points of view on this thing. So it's taken a little while to get them to have a consensus on this, but they all are in agreement that we need to do this and we need to move it ahead now. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome. Thank you. My name is Michael Tribe. I'm an architect at Peter Gisolfi Associates. We're a group of architects and landscape architects and planners and uh, have been working on the master plan since about uh, fall of 2004. Uh, Bob Ryder is a landscape architect who will be presenting and helping you understand the process we've gone through to get to this point. Um, <coughs> the, uh, the master plan that we're looking at is looking at uh, the area of uh, Greenwich Avenue from the Boston Post Road down to Railroad Avenue and also the area that we've called the town green, the center part of town where the Havemeyer building is across from current town hall and to the um, new police station. And uh, the uh, objectives are to provide an overall set of guidelines that would help the development uh, of the avenue and help the, uh, put together the ideas and the concepts that really have been uh, adopted by the town in a variety of different studies and uh, uh, programs that the uh, town has put forward. Um, in particular, the uh, business and traffic management plan of December 2002, that was the, um, that was adopted, the central business traffic <coughs> management plan, and also the goals that were adopted by the plan of conservation development of 98. We started with that as the base of what we were looking at, <clears throat> in addition to analyzing and looking at uh, current conditions. Obviously, the town already has a wonderful uh, avenue and a central business district, and these are um, guidelines so as things are developed, uh, they would follow a format and you don't have pockets of different uh, departments, you know, par parks and recs suddenly doing one little part of uh, the downtown um, and, and different departments uh, uh, acting independently instead of under the umbrella of one master plan. Um, the uh, process we followed is we, we met, obviously, with the first selectman's office. We've had various meetings with the Planning and Zoning Commission, with the uh, Department of Par Parks and Recs, uh, Public Works, Parking Services, and with the Police Department. Um, and then this advisory committee was formed uh, where we had several presentations. And really what we were trying to do is gather information from everybody, listen to everybody, and try to adopt these <coughs> ideas into one plan. Um, we have an overall, does this, this work? Yes, yes, it does. Okay. Oh, is that? Um, Michael, I'm sorry. There's a, the one actually attached is working now. You can turn that. Is that better? Uh, yeah. Overall regional map. Boston Post Road is here, um, down to the Sound. The area we're looking at is obviously Greenwich Avenue along here, um, and we just pointed out points of interest in this light color, the parking areas, and green, the park locations, green areas. <coughs> And we did a, a, a variety of analysis. This really has to do with building use in terms of commercial buildings, residential buildings, and public buildings in the center part of town. Um, <clears throat> the two historic districts and historic buildings that have been uh, declared in town, the um, overall parking count, and we understand that this is a big issue and it's going to continue to be a large issue in terms of the resolution of parking, and we have it all uh, numbered, and we, we understand the, the uh, amount of parking that's available. But it, it drove us to this overall concept, and the concept really has to do with integrating the park area between Town Hall um, and Greenwich Avenue and start to think of how there could be a connection, a much better connection, 
between Town Hall and the new fire department across Greenwich Avenue um, and integrate this whole area. And just to point out some of the problems, um, can everybody see this? It's pretty hard from that distance, but um, one of the ba main problems if, of creating a town green that it's hard to see right now is that you have a whole series of hedges and plantings along Greenwich Avenue that kind of impede <laughs> the access to this, as well as this north parking lot north of the Havemeyer building that kind of separates the commons from the area in front of the Havemeyer building. And the kind of s separate feeling that you get, particularly in the evening, where there's very few lights in this area and it's highly lit, uh, in the uh, walkway across the park. So in, in order to try to mitigate some of these Issues. We uh, prepared this overall master plan, and Bob's going to take you through some of the analysis and some of the drawings we've come up with. That would be a good idea. Bob? Over here a little bit. Huh? I, uh, everyone can okay here. Uh, <clears throat> just to give a, a different context, in a sense, because Michael, in a sense, focused on the central area and the way that kind of evolved as as our central focus. As we got into it, we realized really it was the entire Greenwich Avenue that was evolved, and also it basically included, in a sense, an upper Greenwich Avenue, kind of the central, as well as a lower Greenwich Avenue, and with the two gateways from a Boston Post Road and kind of a terminus at the Southern Gateway at, uh, at the Railroad Avenue. What we initially did after getting involved with the center area, we tried to determine the relationships of the, of the buildings, of the circulation, and we went through a series of analysis of which this illustrates uh, all the, the pedestrian movement through it, the traffic flow, all in uh, the one-way direction down Greenwich, as well as the distribution of parking and uh, the overall circulation within the central area. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and in, in this analysis, we were trying to determine some of the physical aspects and I'm still standing in front, uh, of, of the space through here and the edges that were defined by the buildings, the edges that were defined by the different tree groupings, as well as kind of the topographic change, especially that you get uh, around the, the transition from the athletic fields going up to town hall. Also, we looked at uh, the notion of what, what were the visual aspects moving through here? What kind of views did you have? What focal points there were? For example, the, uh, the cupola on top of Town Hall. The Havemeyer as a kind of focal point, as well as the old Town Hall, the present Senior Center. 
And we went through really looking at all the different areas here and trying to determine the different relationships of them, which included the municipal buildings, kind of a municipal corridor, which uh, joined the health and safety group here, all the way through to the town hall, as well as all the transitional spaces. And in the end, we found a, a relationship of the different buildings in the area, which include everything from the, the safety complex here, the prominent public buildings, the, the post office, uh, the old town hall, have a mire town hall, the proposed uh, senior center location, and a creation of kind of a center town green, as well as a park, which included the play areas, and all of the circulation that joined the different groups in terms of uh, the, the, the movement through here. Also, we explored the idea of providing better access from the different parking areas through uh, an elevator so that you had better access, as well as the, the notion of bringing, for example, maybe from the proposed senior center, a, a way of moving through this open uh, terrace kind of plaza, plaza area here. So that we're trying to really integrate all the different buildings in the area. Okay. Okay. It's not because you're blocking. It's just the area. Do you want to come down here? That's better. Do you know what? If you pull the table down, maybe you can sit. Thank you. You want to come over here? No, I think it's a good one. And we went through a, a similar analysis for Greenwich Avenue. And one of the, I guess, most prominent aspects of Greenwich Avenue is, is the parking situation, the one-way traffic, and the whole notion of it being just a you know, major commercial corridor, in a sense, through there. And one of the interesting aspects, if you look at it from a street accidents point of view, there are, and um, with a darker hash hatches here. The incidence of uh, accidents is most prominent, a little less, and less still through the, through the yellow areas. But it's amazing how many accidents there are. And oddly enough, the distribution of them, which takes place you know, during the midday hours, you know, kind of peaking at, at around 1 p.m. And one of the, uh, another aspect of Greenwich Avenue has to do with the lighting that is there. And uh, part of it is due to the fact that there were these old kind of large scale lamps that are in place, the um, kind of the cobra head that were there. And they've been replaced with uh, new kind of standard 12 foot uh, walkway lamps. However, the distribution along there is not regular. And as a result, the foot candle kind of distribution of light is uneven. So part of what we're getting involved with is how we could infill the lighting, how we could also deal with kind of a, a, a level of illumination that seems appropriate for a pedestrian as well as a vehicular environment. So this was the start of the analysis on that. Another aspect which is probably very difficult to see from down that end is right now you've got diagonal parking all in 
on both sides of the street in one direction. And you're, this, the, the sidewalk width through Greenwich Avenue really varies from maybe six to 10 feet wide all the way up to 20 feet wide. And with that width, you have different opportunities of planting trees, of providing uh, kind of a pedestrian environment with benches and, and streetscape items, as well as, for example, in the lower area of Greenwich Avenue, providing uh, locations for outdoor eating associated with the cafes that may be there. However, in order to do that, you may have to widen the sidewalk in some areas, which may which may uh, limit you in terms of the diagonal parking and only have parallel parking. But the notion on, in this analysis or study was just simply to show the, the possibility of it and perhaps there are locations where, where this is appropriate. And th this gives you a, a sense with uh, elevations through here of what the streetscape could look like in terms of the different widths as well as the plantings and kind of the, the changing width of the pedestrian walkway. Okay. Also involved with our uh, analysis, we, we walked the avenue and we recorded different aspects of it. This has to do with the aesthetic, aesthetic aspects uh, and the, the different types of pavement, uh, kind of the, the aggregation of uh, newspaper, magazine stands, uh, and some eyesore items that need a little, uh, reno little renovation. But basically, the purpose of this was kind of to review the current condition and to provide a framework of objectives that we could incorporate in the overall master plan for treatment. And this had to do with uh, the sidewalk conditions and, again, how they could be uh, changed in terms of pavement, uh, plantings, and uh, pedestrian street furniture, and a variable sidewalk width and what we could accommodate. And this all it's also focused on the the dilemma of the, the, the car on Greenwich Avenue, the angled parking phenomena of trying to back up into a moving traffic, uh, the parking meters that are there, were there other ways of treating it, either the individual meter themselves or could we provide a different system? Uh, and sight lines, uh, was there a way of, of, of improving safety and was, was there a way of dealing with parking in a, in a fashion by limiting times that it could park? Now, in looking at the downtown, there are certain elements that really add to the character. I mean, everything from what you have already started in terms of a palette, uh, including the tree grates that are there, the, the brick walkway that's uh, in the Greenwich Common, and obviously the, uh, all the beautiful stonework that's associated with the town hall and all the different retaining walls that are there. But we thought we'd look at some other areas which are fairly local to get a sense of how other communities have dealt with their downtown streetscape conditions and what visually it looks like in translation. And this is in Darien, of which it's essentially a, a concrete sidewalk with a, with a brick border with uh, plant, tree plant pits with uh, cobblestone and, and benches. This is in Norwalk, Connecticut, of which there is all brick with the granite curbing, but a change of brick pattern to give the, the variety. And this is in Scarsdale, of which they essentially uh, went with a, um, a London paver, a, like two foot by three foot bluestone with a Belgian block uh, edging that incorporated the, the tree plantings and curbing. This is in New Haven, the way that it was treated, again in, in Norwalk, and how they treated the crosswalks and how the bump outs where it were treated in Scarsdale, for example. And some details in terms of, uh, in Ridgewood, how they dealt with the, the tree, and they got a little embellished with the, the, the plantings. And this is in Scarsdale. They, again, they dealt with the, the edge of roadway with this Belgian block that it could accommodate whatever trees that were there, and also the Belgian <laughs> block would enable 
uh, the water to infiltrate to help the planting conditions for survival and tree grates. And we also looked at signage and how it was being aggregated in different areas so that there was a consistency in terms of uh, the character and style. And street furniture, different types of, of benches that, that are in different locations. Oops. And this is uh, in New York City how they, they've accommodated the, the newspaper racks. A, kind of a kiosk nature so that they take up a limited amount of space and are kept in an orderly kind of condition. As I mentioned before, we divided the, the avenue up and essentially we looked at each more or less a block by block basis uh, with, with the idea of looking at where the bump outs could go and how the crosswalks could be located in terms of the, the, the pedestrian crossings. And this was just a very preliminary look just to get a sense of, of where the crossings could be, how they would relate to the existing sidewalk and what constraints may be uh, in, encountered. For example, one of the first things that came up with West Putnam coming in down to Greenwich was the turning radii that fire trucks would, would need to be accommodated. So we were trying to ensure that we looked at functional conditions as well. And this is down Lewis Street with the crossings. This takes you into the center area of which we first looked at taking all the parking out in front of the, the senior center and, and Havemeyer so that this would be a kind of a, a pedestrian area, at least visually. And then we looked at perhaps just doing parallel parking on one side, then diagonal parking on one side in order to keep the parking count up. and. We all kind of agree that the best treatment for this would really be to turn it over to the pedestrian environment totally. I mean, there'd be traffic flowing through, but this pavement could be added to, in a sense, create this linkage. And it would be physical as well as you know, visual. However, we were not going to limit the, the, the flow of traffic because it's, it's the nature of Greenwich Avenue. And this is going down to Railroad Avenue. That's it. And in the end, we, we looked at perhaps a, a pilot project that we would look at. And, and this is the crossing of West Elm and East Elm, where we did. And <coughs> we all tended to favor the Scarsdale paving, which was that gray bluestone, and the two foot by three foot kind of pattern of London Walk, whereby it, it, could, it would have a consistent appearance, yet its width could be altered due to the sidewalk width and building setback without really kind of changing the, the physical aspect of, of how it appeared. And what we did here was we did a bump out, we did crossings, and we utilize existing tree locations as well as we added some where the infill was needed. And we, we put some benches in and the lighting in. Again, if, if it existed, we tended to use the location, but then we also infilled so that we would get kind of a pattern that we could replicate. And the idea was that perhaps this would be a location for an initial you know, pilot study of this, an implementation of it, and making an evaluation of what worked, what didn't, and, uh, and learn from the conditions here.
we're on the last few boards. Sorry, this is taking a little longer than we expected. Um, what we were showing you just now about the, the bump outs in the corners and so on, that comes directly from the plan of conservation and development and the idea of trying to calm the traffic and slow down traffic so that there are less accidents and it's easier for pedestrians to get to the edge of where the cars are parked at 45 degrees and you can see the cars coming uh, when the police are not there and you're trying to cross the traffic. These are just four photographs that refer to some uh, quick sketches that were done. Uh, fortunately, they are in black and white, but it, let me start with another one. Um, it just shows uh, the crossing at Elm. Here's where the bank is, and it starts to um, give you an image of what the avenue may look like. If we go to these London pavers, and they could be a concrete <coughs> pavers, they don't have to be another material, uh, the possibility of adding uh, the, the proper street uh, furniture, uh, the lights, and the, uh, the corner bump outs. Um, illustrated in that drawing. Uh, this is coming down the avenue a little further uh, and the idea of trying to get the town green to kind of stretch itself out onto Greenwich Avenue so as you come down you embrace this green you see it as you uh, come across and this other one that I took down is really already <clears throat> at the corner um, on the London pavers looking across to the senior center and across the street uh, to the Havermeyer building with potentially no parking in that location. Uh, here's an earlier rendering that we had prepared, um, <clears throat> and it just shows the possibility of the green crossing Greenwich Avenue. Um, and what we've uh, introduced to you today is an ongoing project. We have a, a general concept and ideas. We're putting it together in a final report. Um, it takes all of these ideas into consideration and we expect to be <coughs> presenting this in a more public way so that um, the rest of the town can participate, give us their ideas, and modify the plan as needed um, to respond to any of the uh, main issues that affect the town. The other issue is that a lot of the things that are being presented are independent ideas, and they don't necessarily, um, for example, if the parking meters are the current ones, a different type of parking meter, or if you end up with some automatic system where you eliminate all the parking meters and you have something in the corners, that's totally independent of the rest of the plan. Um, so there's a lot of parts and pieces that can be taken in and out uh, depending on uh, which direction the town would like to go. Do you have any questions? or Mr. Stone, do you have a question? <coughs> Realizing you have a variety of options, uh, directions in which you might be moving, but can you give us a range of uh, the, the impact on parking? I, I would think there's no plan that you're talking about that is going to add parking. Can you tell us uh, <coughs> how much uh, from the, the minimum loss of parking to under your various scenarios, what the maximum loss of parking might be in on Greenwich Avenue? Probably the, the minimum loss would be looking at that north parking lot and try to clean up um, the idea of having a, a town green and not have that parking lot. That's 40 spaces in that location. I'll just put this, this drawing up so everybody can see it. Um, it's it's this, there's a parking lot right in this location just north of Havemeyer. <coughs> if in addition to that, uh, this idea is something that everybody likes and would want to go forward with no parking right in front of the uh, senior center. Uh, I think the count there was an additional close to 20 spaces. So that would be around 60 overall. Parkington? If there was no parking in front of the senior center, where would the seniors park? And, you know, I guess. I have certainly questions about the different people that have been on the committee, but are there seniors on the committee so that they would have the input? Lori Jackson is on the committee. She represents the Commission on Aging and this plan. That's one of the agencies that will go back to the seniors to take a look at this and see the impact that it has around it. As far as the parking, Alan Corey is working on these different alternatives. So we end up with taking spaces away because of the need of parking. He's looking at how to pick that parking up in different kinds of 
different ways. I mean, we're looking at now things like changing the meter rates, doing different things that will encourage short-term parking rather than long-term <coughs> turnover, uh, other areas to park. So he's going to tie in something with whatever the plan ends up doing in terms of taking parking away from directly. Well, I was thinking in specifically in terms of the seniors because, you know, I know that many of them love that parking in that area because it is well, very convenient to the side of the senior center, but make up for the ones in front, I think, is where we'll end up with parking. Okay. Oh. I think this is more for the town uh, administrator than, than for the architects, and that is what's the, what's the process? So for the, th the 350 that, that is requested of us, We've seen a preliminary plan. You have a committee. What's the public? And, and I, I take your, your first statements, meaning, you know, I know they're showing a senior center on the, on the parking lot. The 350 will not address that building? The number two building there, the, the proposed senior center. I just want to make sure. Okay, so that's just there for visual effect that's visual. currently. That's, that's what we were looking at in terms of the budget presentation. We wanted to show you where we were at. 350 incorporates just the Greenwich Avenue plus the park and everything around it. Whether that's the scope we end up with, we're not sure. Okay. So for the 350, maybe you can take us through what we should expect to, to get for our 350 and then also what's the process? So you've talked about public input. Does this plan go to the public in some draft form? Say, you know, I know uh, for things like municipal improvement, there's a public hearing. Do you expect that? Can you, can you walk us through that process? Well, what we'll do is we'll sort of, in a sense, duplicate some of the processes we have for the capital budget, <laughs> which is we'll notify all the neighborhood associations when we've got better conceptual plans together, and we'll invite them to come in and talk to us about it. We'll get the information out. We'll put it out on the website, uh, and then we'll begin a tour of some of the districts in terms of going to the neighborhood associations directly um, and let them take a look at this so they can give their input because obviously if you live in Byram you have a different perspective <coughs> of downtown than if you live in Old Greenwich because you have different types of businesses and, that are there and you want to see some kind of um, sort of symmetry down here so we'll go to all of those places and then we expect to have this ready for some kind of budget submission next year in terms of any kind of impact on the infrastructure that will be there and then we'll give it to planning and zoning and let them incorporate it in the plan of conservation and development and see if they can't take it forward with that once they get moving. Um, you know, this is about as exciting as you see me get, but this is really, you know, a, <laughs> this, is, this is really a vision for downtown Greenwich. I think when you get finished with it, and the reason we did these is because you can't just go to a group of people and say, what do you think downtown Greenwich should look like? I think People that have done this before and have looked at it have to come forward with some concepts and let people look at them and think about them and then come back and say, that's nice, but we should do this. So when, when you finish with this, I think you'll have something that the town will, will really have for, for years to come, and it'll be an attraction to downtown. It won't just be buildings and, and streets and everything. It'll be something that people will remember when they come back and forth. So it's going to take time to do this. It may take another year. We, we think we can finish it in, up in time to get it into the budget next year, but if it doesn't make it in there, we'll have it. But we need to get it integrated with the plan of conservation and development. We can't wait for them to finish two and a half years from now to start this process because we're going to miss all that time. And this kind of detail you're not going to find in the POCD. You're just not going to find this. You're not going to find that input where people are specifically looking at this because this isn't, while there are some neighborhoods around here, this is not one particular neighborhood. This is the whole town that you need to get involved in this. So it's not just like going to a neighborhood and asking them what your neighborhood should look like. Yes, Mr. Walko. So in the, in the handout that was provided, uh, I think for the for the budget, right. there's a, a spreadsheet in the back tables. I think they're called Table Three, Table Six. They're not all here, but one of them includes uh, a long-term transportation improvement plan, talking about a trolley, which you didn't mention in your report, but it's in one of these tables. So if you could just address that. That's a document um, out of the, uh, the town study on uh, traffic for the downtown. So those are just the objectives that the uh, Central Business District traffic plan was mentioning. And the reason it's there is because it actually talks about the traffic calming. It talks about a lot of the issues that have been incorporated in we, this we master plan. It's not, that, that's not one of our ideas. Okay. Thank you. 
Mrs. Tarkington. The town green at night, is that going to be a crime problem? It seems like every place where we have like a blank area, it's very frightening to go by at nighttime because that's where the kids gather, et cetera. Is this just going to exacerbate some of these problems that we have on the avenue in the evening? No, I think you'll get the opposite effect. For, for those of you who have seen town greens in the evening that are lighted, <coughs> that are, you know, that are open so that you don't have congested areas like we have now, it'll be the exact opposite. People will want to go walking through there. They'll want to come down to downtown, whether they're coming from the parking lot or somewhere else. It'll be that kind of open area to, to invite people to. Right now, if you have any chance of crime, it's right now. If you want to walk through there, I go through there at night once in a while going back to the train at 10 o'clock at night, and I don't think you want to be going through there. Even the police officers don't like to go through what we have now. But this will be different when we finish with it. It won't look like it does now. It's it's. You're right. It's uninviting. It's dark. It is not a very hospitable place to be looking at. But we're going to change that whole in image <coughs> of that area. Um, in addition, uh, we thought that this main walkway that connects back and forth uh, to Town Hall should be wide enough to allow for emergency vehicles. So if somebody gets hurt on the, on the field, an emergency vehicle could go there. And if in the evening the police car wants to drive through the park, they could actually do that in addition to adding lighting and making it more secure. I'm at, one of, at one of the elements um, that was referenced was a traffic flow study, or at least you looked at the traffic flow coming into the central business district <coughs> from the various ends. It was brought to my attention by one of our former employees who worked in the planning department that there had been a study done, a fairly extensive one, of traffic flow in the mid-80s, uh, and he suggested taking a look at it that was prior to, I think, Mr. Garabedian being the uh, traffic engineer. I don't know if it's something that our planning department has, but um, the gentleman who brought it to my attention is, is Bruce Dixon, who used okay. to work there. We'll take a look at anything we have historically. It'll give us a little better feel for traffic flow in that area. Because his, his comment to me was that there had been extensive review done and that there have been recommendations made that the town has yet to implement. From that time. Even a later one that we, we were given all the different reports that were done that were mostly up to date. I mean, we didn't go back to the 80s or okay. uh, in terms of the recommendations. And we'll, we'll look for that one. Okay. We'll, we'll if I have it. the name, he may have given it to me. I'll pass it along. Okay. Uh, Mr. Finger. Uh, this would be probably Ed, you best answer this. One of the things that, that I've previously was struggling with was how, um, and I had asked you this question this morning, how this plan is distinguished from the, the, um, the $910,000 item in the budget that was looking at utilization of buildings for Senior Center, Board of Education, and uh, the Havemeyer Building in general. I, there is an impact on parking, clearly, from the drawings that, that, um, that you showed, whether it be the elimination of parking in front of the current senior center, the elimination of parking in that little strip next to the common. And I'm not sure how you can accurately and adequately design something with regard to parking unless you know what the use of at least the senior center building is. I mean, it's been suggested that maybe that would be an alternative location for the, um, the Board of Education. The Board of, Board of Education has a lot, a lot more um, pedestrian traffic generating activity than, I, I believe, the Senior Center. Uh, you have a, a fairly large in, um, employee base. And um, I'm just, again, <coughs> still struggling with the notion of how you can work on a streetscape with parking in that central area without knowing how at least the senior center building is going to be utilized? Well, I guess there's two parts to that. One is that obviously if the $900,000 is approved, that will run concurrently with that. We'll have a pretty good idea as we move along what that building is going to be used for. Second thing is that the Board of Education parks now on the lower parking area. Um, once in a while they have people coming and going up, up at the top meters, but basically they're on the lower area. And we don't know what's going to happen to that building. And the reality is that if the town decides to turn that building into something other than what it is now, the town's going to have to deal with parking. I mean, 
whether they like it or not, they just can't convert that building to a heavy use, whether it's in the evening or not, without considering that. Now, whether that means doing something more with the town hall parking lot, making it better accessible, more lit, have a better walkway going across there, and just off he's looked at that a couple of times. There's no reason why we can't do that. Other places do that. If you go to the Goodspeed Opera House, you park way down by the river and walk way up along the, the paths. People do it all the time. So it's not impossible to think that we couldn't utilize that parking area at night for functions that go on, whether they're in the senior center, whether they're over here, or even for the Board of Education employees. I mean, there's no reason why they can't park in that parking lot. We have vacancies in there. We've issued some new permits recently because we've had a, uh, the opportunity to do that. It's a question of how we use these resources. I mean, other people do this. We just haven't made a very good uh, effort at doing it. We can certainly turn that thing around. So there's, there's those kinds of options that are available without making any drastic changes down here once we decide on what the use of those buildings <coughs> are. Um, and if the town wants to do something different, they certainly can do that. But we think we can make do with what we have. Ms. Barton. Is it possible to segregate um, in this project that part of Greenwich Avenue that comes down to just short of the Havemeyer building and work from Putnam Avenue down using the Elm, Elm Street intersection as an example and leave the, the rest of the avenue alone until we have a better idea of what's going to be there and what its use is. I'm very troubled by the, the potential inconsistency between the two studies unless we, unless we combine the effort as to what the the down the the Havemeyer and further towards the highway part of Greenwich Avenue is going to look like. Well, I guess they can do anything, but I I think in terms of looking at this thing, if you have a, a town green, that's what it is. It's a town green, whether or not the Havemeyer building is used as an art center or whether it's used as a central office for the Board of Ed or whether it's used as a senior center. The town green isn't going to change. It's not going to make any impact on that. It's not going to make any impact on the fact that you want pedestrians to be able to cross the road uh, without feeling like the kamikaze targets that, the, that we have right now. And th that's one, in terms of pedestrian flow, that's the whole idea of this, just to make it more accommodating and more inviting to pedestrians as you go up and down the avenue. Right now, you don't want to do that. I mean, anybody that walks up and down the avenue or crosses, it's not an inviting place to do that. So you're right. I mean, all things considered, if we had everything perfect, it'd be nice to know what those buildings are going to be used for. And there may be some small adjustments and modifications that they'd have to make to accommodate that, but I don't think it's going to make a lot of difference. I think if the town wants a town green, they want a better pedestrian-type uh, avenue and they want some other things there, I don't think the use of those buildings are really going to make that big a difference on it. I'm not, I mean, I'm not as sanguine as you are right, on that, okay. but I hear your point. Right. Ms. Tarkington. Uh, yes, Mr. Tessie, you mentioned the uh, traffic study. Uh, I'm not familiar about the one in the 80s, but I am familiar with the one that was done, I guess you said it was December 2002. And I actually participated in that study, as I believe Mrs. Stone did. She may have been the chairman of Planning and Zoning. And I participated because I was a user of the Greenwich Plaza parking lot. And what surprised me about that study was that it was really just all local uh, merchants or um, uh, commercial property owners. And I do think that we need to address and understand the traffic flows um, and how all of this will impact the traffic flows. Because, you know, we can't just look at this beautiful avenue at the end of the, you know, during the day. It's also this one of the main ways that commuters who live in districts 7, 10, and 11 can get to down to the train stations and so forth and so on. A lot of the other routes are almost blocked off to them. So I think very fundamentally, before some of these great thoughts are had, um, we better understand, you know, how these people who generate a lot of property taxes can get to their jobs, um, which they do by commuting through our train stations. And um, so I think there's some very fundamental things here that need to be looked at. Yeah, I agree with you. I think the only, maybe the only difference we have is that we're, we're not going to let them race down the avenue like they do in the morning because, I mean, uh, but you're right. They're certainly going to consider that, the impact of whether that affects people coming and going down there. <coughs> Great. Oh, Mr. Himes. 
I think this is Fred. Um, the Board of Ed at one point a couple of months ago had had uh, looked at an option of putting a new building on that parking lot to the south of the, the Havemeyer building. Right. Um, and the reason I bring it up is because I, I see a lot of attractions to, what, to what's here. One of the things that's a little intuitively concerning is, is putting the seniors away from a natural pedestrian you know, with Starbucks, the whole thing, where you know, you're sort of, you're almost committing them in some respects to to cars. Is the idea of building on that south lot off the table, or is that something that will be taken up as part of the process of working through? I, I mean, that obviously has par significant parking implications as well. So I'm just wondering if that's off the table, or whether that's still in the in the mix of possible consideration. Well, I, I guess everything's on the table. I think that was looked at, though, and that seemed to be the least likely candidate for approval in terms of traffic flow and, and other things that we were doing and the size of the building in terms of it being over there um, it just seemed to be out of scale with what everything was going on just off did do some preliminary looks at that um, and you can't fit a building in there and you know you need to accommodate parking down there once you do that um, but everything is still on the table basically we're not, you know, we're not taking it off realistically everyone knows that the best situation with the board of it is to come over to town hall whether they come on the back of town hall whether they come over here so we can have make use of, of duplicate type services and duplicate type uh, uh, people that we have here and whether that happens or not that's really up to people like yourselves that, that have influence on the town to do that I mean that's the best use of your money that's the best use of how to utilize personnel <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Crummick. I just want to say that that deals more with the 910. Right. Um, and that issue, uh, although it's it's tempting to see this uh, bird's eye view uh, to figure out where the pieces would fit, but we're focused now, I guess, on the streetscape. Streetscape and the and the town park running from the town garage all the way over to the police station, right? And we pretty much would be doing that uh, anyway. Right. Uh, right. I, you can you can argue about eliminating the parking but certainly it's it's one option to do that in order to get this this green Greenwich green effect um, but uh, you know and I, I our town for some reason has in the past turned down this kind of streetscape beautification money which I I've never <coughs> understood that I've never understood why people don't look at the center of our town and realize that so much of our our, our wealth and our comes from uh, a successful uh, downtown uh, retail district. Well, you have a, a real valuable asset in that area between the parking garage and, and running over to Greenwich Avenue. It's a shame to leave it like it is now. It's just open space. Nobody utilizes it. Once in a while, somebody uses a small soccer field or the field hockey field, but you don't utilize it at all. And that's a, one of the most prominent pieces of property you have in town. If you go to Madison or Guilford and you look at their greens, well, they're not, there's nothing superlative about them. People use them all the time. They're always in and out of there. <coughs> it's very attractive for businesses. People walk through there during the holidays. They do all kinds of things. It's just a much more welcoming place uh, for the town itself. So, you know, you've, you've got a lot to utilize there without really getting into new areas. You don't need to buy anything. You just need to fix up what you have. <coughs> Great. If there aren't any other comments, I think... We're pleased with the presentation. Thank you for being here this evening to enlighten us on your work. And we will um, convene again tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. Central Middle School for the public hearing on the 0708 budget. If you have any amendments or conditions for the budget, if you could please get them into Roland Geiger so that he can disseminate them to the rest of the board prior to Wednesday night, it would be appreciated. Is there a motion to adjourn? Mr. Finger, seconded by Mr. Norton.